is, is dependent on the data and not on model. Thus, given a data, the expression bias square plus variance will also be constant. In other words, if bias increase, variance will go down with change in the model and vice versa. If bias decrease, variance will go up with the change in the model. Now, what is meant by underfitting and what is meant by overfitting? Let us say the structure of the data is like this and we have fitted something like this. This is a case of underfitting. Here, there is high bias in the data, in the model rather, because the model is not able to predict even in the training data set itself, the target data point. So this has high bias. And as you can see from the previous equation, as bias increases, variance must decrease. So for underfitting, high bias leads to low variance. Let us give an example of overfitting then. In overfitting, let us say the data points are scattered like this and we have fitted the model exactly in the same way. This is too good to be true and an example of overfitting. This model explains all the variance in the data, almost all the variance in the data. So here, the variance is high. And from the MSE equation, which states that if variance is high, bias must be low. So you may ask me, then what's the problem with overfitting? Because we want the bias to be low. The thing is that the explanation of the variance in this model, in case of an overfitted model, is actually the explanation of the noise present in the data. So the model not only captures the inherent features of the training data set, but the noise present in the data. And when we come to a fresh data set, the so called test data set, then the performance of the model is very poor. So we don't want either of underfitting or overfitting. We want a model which has just the right amount of bias and just the right amount of variance. Now let us see what are the possible causes for underfitting. Underfitting may happen if the training data set is very small training data is very small or if we are trying to capture nonlinear data by linear models like linear regression. If the training data is small, then the model cannot learn enough to predict. That's where we get underfitting. And if we are trying to capture a nonlinear model like this parabola with the help of a straight line, with the help of a linear regression, then also it leads to underfitting. Next, we come to 
the possible causes for overfitting. Number one, it can happen if there are large noisy training data sets. And secondly, it can happen for complex models like decision trees which are prone to overfitting. If the training data set is very large and it is very noisy, then the model not only learns the inherent patterns present in the data, but also along with that, it learns the noise that is present in the training data set. And that's where it is prone to overfitting. Again, if the model used is a very complex model like the decision tree, then because it is prone to capture much of the variance in the data, and as you have already heard that high variance and low bias leads to overfitting, then complex models such as these decision trees may lead to the phenomena of overfitting. I hope that you have benefited from today's session. Please like, comment and subscribe our channel and be tuned for more such helpful data science and machine learning videos. Thank you. Thank you.